What's up you guys, it's Joey, and this is the first video for our road to 1 million dollars. To be fair, we're not starting at day zero, but we're going to start our first video with month seven. Because I joined Amazon seven months ago, I started saving and investing for seven months, and today, let's see how that progress went along. So, we start off the month with June, me joining Amazon, and I get to have a big fat sign-on bonus of $25,000. But, ridiculously enough, the federal government taxes me so it drops down to $16,000. I thought, how can they withhold so much tax from me? But they really do this so that they can take the tax from you and then give it back to you in a tax return next year. Unfortunately, that means that that's money you can't be investing and that's the government just holding that money for you. Anyways, I'm left with the June having $16,000 in my bank account. <laughs> So in the month of June, I also decided to buy my first car. I've never bought a car before, and what's the first car that I decided to buy? I bought a Tesla Model 3 Long Range Real Wheel Drive with autopilot included and midnight silver features included, bringing up the total sticker price up to $54,000. With that $54,000, I take a loan of $42,000 at a 3.49% interest rate. The way that I was able to get that loan was by shopping around with different banks and finally we were able to get our credit union that we we're with to give us a lower interest rate. Basically, I wasn't able to get approved for the whole $54,000 loan because I don't have enough of a credit history. So now with this, I use basically most of my bonus to pay down the initial difference of the loan and the balance of the car. Another thing is that the $54,000 car is actually cheaper by $6,250. That's because I was able to get a California state tax rebate of $2,500 for electric vehicle, as well as a federal tax credit, which is coming up in February for $3,750 for this Tesla Model 3. So those are my first big purchases. So let's break down what goes in and what goes out at the end of the month. So basically, for the 401k, Amazon will match 50% of any money you put in up to 4% of what you put in. So basically I contribute 4% of my income into the 401k, they will match it with 2%, leaving me essentially putting in 6% of my base salary of $120,000 into the 401k, which will be taxed later on when I'm at the age of 65. After the 401k, which I'm putting aside 6% of my base income every single year, I finally get the base salary of 120k, which is divided up over the course of a year. So what they're giving me every four weeks is effectively after the state tax and the Medicare tax and the federal tax, they put in my pocket $6,000 every four weeks. So here are my basic required costs every single month. I have to pay $1,500 to my parents for rent every single month. I have to pay every month $763 for my car loan. And finally, I have to pay $100 Per month for my gym membership since I go to a powerlifting gym and it's basically a premium for being or going to a gym with more elite lifters and having better equipment. As for things like gas and transportation, I don't have to pay a single cent for it because I do all my charging at home and my parents will just pay for the utility bills. So next up this year, I took a vacation which cost me in total about $3,000 where I paid for both me and my girlfriend. So. I paid for this vacation as much as I could basically using points. So here are the credit cards that I opened up. I opened up five credit cards this year in order to get the sign up bonuses and churn my way through them. First, I opened up a Chase Sapphire Preferred for $95 annual fee and it has a 60,000 points sign up bonus, which when redeemed for points, I was basically able to get $800 out of that. The next card that I signed up for was the City Premier card, which has a $95 annual fee and a 60,000 points bonus, which is also about $800 when I redeemed it for my vacation. The third card I signed up for was American Express Platinum card, which has a $550 annual fee and has a 60,000 Amex points sign up bonus, which I was able to, I'm still able to hold onto it and I'm getting a lot of value. I've not, haven't spent all of it yet, so I'm not totally sure, but I estimate that that 60,000 points is worth about $1,000. Next up, I opened up recently an American Express Delta card for 60,000 Delta miles, costing me an annual fee of $95.
finally, I opened up a Chase Freedom card with no annual fee and getting 5% cash back on rotating categories. Finally, my last card, which I already had before, which is my first card I ever opened up, was a Discover IT student card, which has no annual fee and 5% cash back on revolving categories. I'd recommend for beginners that this is the first card you should be getting because the Discover IT card is basically really easy to get approved for. And also, just a 5% back on rotating categories makes it an essential thing for you to get if you want to just get simple rewards back on some basic things like uh, grocery stores, gas stations, you name it. They have so many things rotating throughout the year. So let's go over the net worth calculation according to Mint. According to Mint, my biggest asset here is a Tesla Model 3, which according to Kelly Bluebick is $44,564. Now, although that I'm not going to actually realize these values until I actually sell the car, and as well as I know that the car is a depreciating asset, I'm just going to include it in a net worth calculation. Next up, we have the Vanguard brokerage account, which puts me at $30,000 to this day. We also have my 401k plan, which currently has invested $4,850. Next up, let's go see what I have in my checking account. Right now, I currently have $971 in my Venmo, $34, $29 for my savings account, $6 for my primary savings account, and Robinhood, I have just a basic $4 stock in GameStop that they gave me for signing up for Robinhood. They give you a free stock, which is basically valued really cheap. So finally, the total assets that I currently have control is $87,730. So finally, let's go look over my debts. My biggest debt I have is the Tesla Model 3 loan balance I have to pay off, which is at $38,000. Next off, my next debt is my credit cards which overall pushes my total debt cost to $38,500. When you take these assets and then you subtract the debts, it would put my net worth to be at $42,000. So let's see how my Vanguard investing is doing right now. Basically, I'm investing most of my money, $3,500 every single month into the stock market. I don't put really anything into savings because my philosophy on it is in the case of an emergency, even if basically my stocks dropped in half, I'd be okay with having that as my emergency fund. So now that I'm doing that, I'm investing most of my stocks early on into Vanguard Tech, VGT. It's basically a technology-based mutual fund owned by Vanguard, I'm basically tracking the top tech, um, top tech companies. I'm also investing about 10% of my portfolio into Tesla. And during that time, it was really shooting down. But I didn't sell it, I just kept holding and buying more shares. I bought shares at 300, I bought shares at 200. I just did not care about it going down because I was in it for the long haul. Things and investments didn't really start really kicking off until about November where I started to make some decent returns where I had about $1,600 in total returns. Finally, in December, I was able to get that number up to $2,700 in total returns. And I had in total for my balance for Vanguard, $24,500, which was really a great Christmas for me. And finally, let's go see how it finishes off in the end of January. Basically, during this time, I made a big bet. So I moved about $12,000 out of my Vanguard G VGT over into Tesla because I thought that they were going to have a pretty good earnings call and I decided that I want to be a big Tesla bull. So I moved all that money out and I bought shares at about $400, $500, $560. Basically, across that, I have 36 shares and my average cost base was about $506 when I did that. And during this time, I was able to make $3,500 in a single day after the Q4 earnings by Tesla, bringing up my overall investment returns up to $7,192. Also, during this time, the coronavirus hit from China, which dropped the VGT stock, which basically meant that I was able to avoid getting hit by the coronavirus dropping my VGT stock because I moved it all to Tesla. And with the coronavirus, it didn't affect the Tesla stock at all. In fact, the Tesla stock is one of the few, along with Amazon, that actually was able to increase over this time. Finally, finishing my ending balance in VGT end of January at 30000 $267. So now that I hit that $42,000, I'm just going to keep 
investing and keep saving more money and let's just see how it goes on for there. See you for the next episode.